Recently, I've been getting a bunch of comments saying that I look like Joe from You. And so I thought, well, Joe recommends a bunch of books. I like reading books. Why don't I read the books that he recommends and see if we think alike, too? <laughs> kind of wish that Joe recommended some, like, <laughs> 50 pagers, you know? This is what I'm talking about. This is what we wanted from Joe. Flatland. It's, you know, a beautiful little guy. What do you need a thousand pages for, Don Quixote? If we add that all up, just about 3,000 pages uh, that I plan on reading in nine days. That feels like a lot. Not to mention, he recommends a, a Stephen King, uh, so I picked up the audiobook on Audible. Uh, it's called Sleeping Beauties. That's 25 hours long. I'm listening at 1.5 times speed works out to just under two hours a day. So in total, we're gonna be looking at about an eight hour a day commitment, which is a full-time job. Seems doable. Started Don Quixote. It is fantastic. I am actually excited that there are a thousand pages, which I didn't, like I thought it was gonna be a bit of a slog. I am pumped for this. So I'll probably get to a couple hundred pages uh, before I call it a night tomorrow. Hope to do the same, you know, except uh, read a little bit more because I'm not starting in the night. I'm starting in the morning. Okay, it's 11 a.m. now. I've probably been reading 75, 80 minutes. Uh, so yeah, 300 pages deep into a thousand there, 30% done. Uh, see how far we can get today in that. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so end of day one, audiobook, we're down to, well, I'm, I'm through seven hours, 22 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, putting us in chapter 12. With uh, Don Quixote, we got today from page, I think, 204 to page 700. I don't know if you can see that. So that's about 500 pages of reading. I did about nine hours of reading. You know, I actually have things to do with my life uh, tomorrow and this weekend. Uh, I'm not just sitting around reading, but this should be the head start that we need to get this done in the next week. So feeling pretty good about day one. <laughs> Okay, it's a little bit late, but I wrapped up Don Quixote, and it was fantastic. I have to say, it's my favorite fictional book I've ever read. It is Monday today. I lost a little bit of the weekend to not reading, so we're a little bit behind, but all is not lost. I'll wake up tomorrow, and I'll move on to the Three Musketeers, retiring Don Quixote. <laughs> All right, so just like that, done the second book, the second most voluminous book as well, The Three Musketeers, Alexandre Dumas. It's really good. It wasn't as good, in my opinion, as Don Quixote. It's kind of hard to top what is established now as my favorite piece of fiction of all time. But it was, it was a nice story, nevertheless. About halfway done in terms of page count, which is great. Uh, I'm way over halfway done in terms of day count. But hey, you know what? That is what it is. It's like 7 p.m. now. I think I can get a solid five hours in. I can get probably 300 plus pages down of this, meaning that tomorrow morning I can wrap this, crush this, and then we'll have an entire day to get through Wuthering Heights. I say that like a day is a long time. So the last time we talked, I think was 7 p.m. and I just started the Count of Monte Cristo. It is now uh, 2.30 a.m. and I am done the Count of Monte Cristo. I couldn't put it down. I, it was one of those stories that just absolutely reels you in and there is no point at which you will be satisfied stopping. It also helped that my neighbors upstairs were throwing a party so I actually uh, probably wouldn't have slept anyways. We're making good progress. 13 and a half hours of reading today. Uh, almost a thousand pages. Um, call, me, call me a bookworm, I guess. I don't know. I feel like a kid. I feel like one of the, like, when I was a kid in summer, I would, I remember going to the library and just getting all sorts of novels. And I would read, like, Hardy Boys, stuff like that, and I would just binge through them. And I could read, you know, multiple novels in a day, for sure. And I would stay up late reading. And I don't know the last time I've done that and maybe it's been like a decade. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some sleep and then tomorrow we'll hit Master Margarita. 
maybe get some weathering heights done. All right, it's about 5.45 p.m. here. Uh, I'm a few hours of reading deep into The Master and Margarita. It's a bit of a slower read. When I say I'm a few hours in, I'm like five hours in, and I'm on page 266. We just finished book one of two, presumably. All right, so it is now 9 p.m., and I'm done The Master and Margarita, although to say that I'm done is a bit of a, it's a bit of a lie. I mean, I finished the book. I was reading a review uh, that was talking about this and how hard it is to kind of put into justice all of the things that this book touches upon and all of the layers of this book. You could sit here and, and read it with one lens or another lens or another lens and I think every time you read it through you would have a bit of a deeper understanding. I'm trying my best not to skim these books. I really truly am. I'm not, you know, just, you know, trying to get a, a cursory glance and a, a basic understanding. I could just read the smart notes if I want to do that, right? Like I'm dedicating many hours to these books. I was, you know, nine hours straight there reading The Master and Margarita. I'm assuming Wuthering Heights will be a similar length. Uh, I'm a head to bed. I'm, I'm fried from that book. That book has done a number on me. I have some work to do tomorrow, so I probably won't be reading until the evening. So it seems like we're gonna be dedicating our evening tomorrow to Wuthering Heights, and then uh, calling it quits. I'm a little tired today. I don't know if you can tell. A um, little bit, little bit drained, I think, from the past few days of reading. Nevertheless, <laughs> if you're seeing this, I made it through. Okay, it is disgustingly late, but we are done Wuthering Heights, and thus the challenge is complete. I have now read all of the books that Joe recommended. A few brief words about Wuthering Heights. I thought that it was fantastic. It differentiated itself from the other novels that I read for this challenge in that it was the most realistic. The characters are most like people who I know in real life. The villain, who I think, by the way, is one of the, the great villains in literature, at least the literature that I've read, uh, Heathcliff, such a good villain. I think it's a fantastic novel. Really, really good. So just like that, the challenge is complete. And I thought, okay, let's let's take a little reflection. Let's see, let's see where we've come. The very first book, Don Quixote. I think what what was so compelling to me about this was that it's just what seems to be a never-ending adventure. Although it does have an end and a you know solid, a final end at that, it's just a story that you can lose yourself in. And I think that's what I turn to fiction for a lot of the time is. It's like an escape. It's another world. And I think that that is, I guess that is a context that Joe recommended Don Quixote. And, and it's true. It is a perfect escape. It's whimsical. It's tongue-in-cheek. It's, it's brilliant. It is fantastic. So the second book that I read, The Three Musketeers, Duma, I think Joe lent it to Paco kind of in a context of, you know, it's, it's a good book. And it is. It's a good book. I, I wouldn't say... You know, it, it touched on anything very, very deep. It's just entertaining. It's highly entertaining. You know, I, I liked it. The characters are fantastic. Not complex, but wonderful, right? Uh, and I think that's that's exactly what it is. You know, it's, it's fast-paced. It's nice. It's accessible. It's a great book. I did not like it as much as the other Dumas that Joe recommended, The Count of Monte Cristo. I thought this was fantastic. And now this is lent... Uh, by Joe to Paco, talking about revenge, if I recall correctly. And that's the entire book, and it's, you know, 500 pages of just vengeance slowly being extracted. It was one that I couldn't put down. So the next book was the book that Joe gave to Ellie in season two, uh, and this is The Master and Margarita. Like I said, there are just so many layers to it. It's a little hard to unpack. I'm gonna have to read it again. It's funny, you know, the characters are great. It's a fantastical world. I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. But I think it's something which I could love if I, if I read it differently. So I plan on doing that. Absolutely. All right. And finally, this brings us to Wuthering Heights, which I just wrapped up maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. I think what's super interesting about this, spoiler alert a little bit, is that Joe 
is very similar to Heathcliff. They actually share a lot of the same characteristics as villains. There's discrepancies for sure. It's not, you know, a carbon copy. But you see this character who makes decisions that you can understand out of love and out of frustration with that love. And yet they are decisions which you, though you understand them, can't justify. So then finally we have the audiobook Sleeping Beauties. And I think it's a little bit harder to tie this one to you beyond the simple fact that the, the premise of the novel is a world where women fall asleep, they're cocooned, and then they essentially disappear. And I, I think what I saw when I was researching this and looking at the books, what people are pointing to is that, well, the women in, in Joe's life disappear. That being said, fantastic audiobook. Talk more about that in a minute. So overall, very successful challenge. I am so pleased that I did this. I, I've been introduced to some of my favorite works of fiction of all time. So Joe, thank you for the great recommendations. Please don't kill me. <laughs> I'd now like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. I have used Audible almost every day for the past year and a half, and I use it when I'm doing so many different things. When I'm walking, commuting, when I'm cooking, when I'm in the gym. I listen to audiobooks a ton through Audible, and it has been a fantastic service for me. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks out there, and beyond that, they've now got Audible Originals, which are original pieces of audio content produced by Audible. And the audiobook that I'm going to recommend to you now should come as no surprise after watching this video. It's Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King. And it's read by Marin Ireland, who does a fantastic job. And I think one of the cool things about this audiobook is that there's actually a conversation with the authors included. So you get a little bit of extra content beyond the audiobook itself. So if you want to check out Sleeping Beauties or any other audiobook in Audible's massive collection, then what I'll recommend you do is go to audible.com slash johnfish or text code johnfish to 500, 500. This will get you a 30-day free trial, including one free audiobook and two pieces of Audible original content. That's all for free if you go to audible.com slash johnfish or text code johnfish to 500, 500. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking with me. Hopefully I'm not too out of it right now. It's hard to tell. I realized this past week what a privilege it is that I can kind of push work to the side and say, oh, okay, this week I'm just gonna read. I understand that's a tremendous privilege and it is because of you guys on the internet that I have that privilege. So thank you, I appreciate it. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to like it, leave a comment, subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm if you do these things according to Graham, Stephen, or I don't know. <laughs> it also just feeds my ego, okay? I spent a lot of hours reading. I would like it if you justified that. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is worth it in itself. Okay. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you endlessly.